Hello, quilters and chatters. Yay, Lisa's awake today, sweetie. So good to see you. So let me bring my... And I think you should be able to hear me because Mark himself turned on the microphone. Ladies, this is the way it goes around here. <laughs> if I'm going to remember it, it has to be Mark to remember it. So, hello. We'll let everybody get in. Lisa, so tell me about you. What you, what have you been up to? Oh, don't forget, Lisa, the pineapple fabric sale starts Thursday, so I will be there bright and early. Vicki, hi, sweetheart. How is Michigan doing today? I'm eating today some blueberry yogurt. Mm. I've been so busy that... I'm running late today, and I apologize. I got hung up making a new project for you guys. I saw it online and thought, I have to do this. Susan's here. Yay, Miss Susan. Oh, man, let me put my glasses on. we got Patricia Fry's here from Myrtle Beach, soon to be Virginia. You are quilting a, what is I think a W means quilt <laughs> with some minky backing. Oh, how's that working? I've never done minky except for decorative uses. Hi, Vicky's husband. You know, Mark grew up in, well, he, he, the last place he lives was Brighton. And what's the other place with an L? Livonia. Livonia. He lived in Livonia first. So isn't this the sweetest quilt? I figured it's always going to be on that side of the quilt uh, show thing. So busy, Lizzie. Hello. So nice to see you. What state are you from? If you're me, you're from the state of chaos. <laughs> oh, wonderful. In fact, I had, I had the landscape quilt on there. Take some time to look at it. And I need to make some adjustments. So I, I'm going to tomorrow morning. I guess I'll just consider Mondays my landscape days. I'll make another video where I'm going to see how far I can get on this tomorrow. But it's always important. Isn't that quilt beautiful? It's always important when you're working on anything to you, especially if you're working on it horizontally to get back from it and look at it vertically because it's the only way you're going to see problems or anything you'd like to change. So hello, Bianca Duncan quilt to quilt. I love that. I love that. So let me see who we've got Elizabeth. Oh, I love the busy Lizzie. I love that. My daughter whose birthday is today. Happy birthday. My Katie girl. And um, she is Catherine Elizabeth, and I love the name Elizabeth. It's really sweet. I wanted, though, her to be called Katie. And let me tell you, when she was born, she was born a Katie. So I don't know about you guys, but pollen here has been a bugaboo. And um, pardon me a second. And I feel like I have had a cold but it's not a cold. It's just allergy. So we'll see how I do. So, oh, there's Sonia. Mwah. So good to see you, Sonia. Cindy Conway, wonderful. And I'm so glad to have Susan back with us today. That girl has been running around like mad training for a new job and driving to training. I mean, what a busy time. So, but my Katie, they asked if, um, they could have some medical students come in when Katie was going to be born. And I had big babies. I mean, nine and 10 pound babies. And my son, who was my preemie, was eight pounds, four ounces or eight pounds, three ounces. And he was a preemie. <laughs> so he filled up the little, you know, the isolate in the NICU unit. So it was so cute. But anyway, so Katie was, they had 15-inch heads. I mean, they were little linebackers when they were born. 
And so they, I knew it would be, a, it was a plan C section and I had my makeup on and I had my hair done and I was all, you know, they said, can some medical students come and sit in? And I said, sure. The more the merrier. She was born screaming. She was so mad that they pulled her out of a warm, quiet, dark place where she didn't want for a thing. They yanked her out to this bright, loud, cold place, and she let them have it. Oh, no, you're kidding. They've, are you sure, Vicki? Well, I'm not quite to the thousands, so uh, we better get me up to a thousand so I can keep doing this. So, oh, thank you, Miss Busy Pat. Oh, Busy Pat, it's so good to see you. I I wanted to tell you all this, too, um, that I read all of your chats after we're done. And I'm sorry that lately it seems I miss a lot of the chats. So there were several times I didn't even say hi to Busy Pat, and I felt horrible about it. But I'm glad you're here and know that if I don't see you talking while you're talking, if I miss it, I'll catch it up later. Feel free to ask me questions, mention something, and I'll answer it. In fact, Nadine had a question, and I'm trying to remember now what it was, but I'll see if I can remember it while we're talking. Because I really do care that each of you are here, and I care so much to help answer any questions you have, help you out. So, ah, yeah, we don't need many subscribers. We're so close. We're so close. But um, you didn't get the notice, Bonnie. I'm sorry. And I was a little late. So we just actually, I probably didn't get on here till about seven after. I apologize. I'm so excited today because I found, I went looking. Yes. I have no idea how to okay. No worries, sweetheart. Mark was trying to fix um, my tablet for me because I wanted to do some pictures on the tablet. Doesn't look like it's working. No problems. We will we will do without it. But thank you, Mark. And uh, so I saw the cutest table runner because you know I get a bunch of emails. And I thought, I want to make this with the ladies. And But what I did is I didn't want to copy anybody else's pattern. I didn't want you to have to go out and purchase anything. And so I searched and searched until I found a free one. So here it is. Is that just the cutest thing? And I like it because it's relatively straightforward. It's scrap friendly. You don't have to buy a thing because I'm pretty sure you have just what you need for it. And what did, oh, let me see. <gasps> Busy Pat's going to be a grandma. Yay. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm sure that's your beautiful daughter that was married. What, last year? This is wonderful going to be a boy, just like mine, my little grandson. That's wonderful. Yes. And so these spring colors are enticing. And I'll show you what I use because that's why I was a few minutes late. I came down here, took some pictures of the pretty spring outdoor flowers, which I may or may not be able to figure out how to show you. And... Um, And then I was working on that April Easter table runner. Diana Wright had questions about LaFleur colors. Yes, please ask because you've got Bonnie here, who's the expert, and me, who will try to do her best. So that is so exciting, Busy Pat. I am so happy for you. It's going to be a great time. So let's see what we've got. Everyone is noticing Miss Nadine's quilt in the back. I sent pictures of it to my daughters. They were so touched. They said, Mom, you've got the best group of ladies. I mean, they just care, and they're just so involved. And I'm hoping that um, Diana Wright, is she here yet? Oh, yeah, so what I was telling, yeah, I was telling you about Katie, because I knew she had to have, that they had to be C-sections. 
And oh, she was just born. She was mad, mad, mad. So, <laughs> but today is her birthday and she still is spitfire and so much fun. And uh, she made me laugh more than any of my kids. And she frustrated me more than any of them, but she made me laugh more than any of them. So anyway, so Lisa, you're going to have to tell us what it's like to use Minky for backing. I would be terrified of it. And then so busy, Lizzie, Elizabeth, that is wonderful. We're so tickled. We're so tickled. Jamie's Crafty World. Let I think I saw, saw one of her videos come up. So I said, I want to see who this, more about this Jamie, because I know she's delightful and lovely and supportive and energetic and young. Okay, young. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. But anyway, so I went and I thought, oh, she's a pretty thing and has the cutest little girl. Oh, my gosh, cutest little girl. And I think a son, too. Nice, nice growing up young man. So let me see. So Cindy, I do love your name too, Busy Lizzie. I love that. So let's see. Oh, it's 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 pretty bad. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. Let's see how I do. My asthma. The other night, I tried to bake bacon. Because I have asthma, I hate it when we cook it on top of the stove because the particulates that get in the air give my asthma a mess. So I tried one more time to do a baking in the oven method. Well, that was a mess. The bacon grease somehow dripped into the back of the oven and the oven smoked, the house smoked up. Oh, I hate that. So it really bothered me. And... um. It really, really bothered me. And so uh, we aired it out and tried to freshen everything, wash sheets, you know, every, anything that was near it. And um, poor man sewing and Tiffany quilting life. That's cute. So anyway, um, yeah, so don't forget, d hit the like if you like it. And um, there's a bell that they say, too, you can hit where you'll get notifications. Hopefully, poor Bonnie didn't get one. But, um, but anyway, and then last night I did roasted potatoes and carrots and onions. And it set off an asthma attack. Oh, let me tell you, it was bad, bad, bad. And I said, Mark, I need to go sit down because I was afraid I was going to pass out. And I said, could you please bring me my inhaler, my rescue inhaler? So I had to go on my Spiriva, which I hate using because it's $5 a dose. But got to have it, got to have it. You know, I, if, if it's a choice between medicine and fabric, I got to go medicine. So, but anyway, so just let you know, I'm back on that. But it's going to take a couple weeks to get my lungs back in shape. Any, I think some of y'all have. You know what? That's a good idea, Busy Pat, because we haven't cleaned my, I have a um, air pure, great big air purifier in my bedroom, and we haven't cleaned it in a while. Thank you for mentioning that, sweetheart. Oh, you have a cold, Kathleen. I'm sorry. But you went to Vancouver. That's Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken, is on the West Coast, and it's gorgeous. I have a screensaver that pops up on my computer. That's the Vancouver shoreline. Oh, my gosh. It's it's so beautiful. It's like something out of Jurassic Park. It is that striking. Oh, Jamie just said a really important thing, guys. If you have hit the notification bell, every once in a while, unclick it and re-click it because it kind of forgets about you. Melissa's here. Oh, my gosh, Melissa, it's coming in Friday. Oh, you went for two days of training already. Yay. So are you happy with it? I mean, I imagine that's wonderful. So let me see. Oh, it's buffering. I'm so sorry. Patty Chamberlain, where is that girl? Is she here? Is Patty, because you know what? There's Patty. I failed to say hi to Patty the other week. And, you know, I love Miss Patty. So, oh, I'm just so excited. Melissa, I'm so happy for you. 
I wanted to thank Diana Wright. Oh, there's Diana. There she is. I wanted to thank her because I I had done frame quilting for a while. And so one of, I don't know if the Diana does it every day. But if you haven't done it in a while, it can kind of be a little tricky getting back into it. Because I think it's as much of a touch and a feel and holding your tongue the right way to get it to work. So I had tension problems. The first day I sat down to work on my grandson's quilt, I spent hours with the tension. Changed needles, you know, cleaned out, made sure to clean up bobbin, oiled it, tried several different threads. And finally, though, started getting it right. But I noticed my thread was still breaking. So I happened to mention it on our Yahoo site. And Diana Wright rushed in with some answers. And thank you, thank you. So the reason I started to say this too, oh, it is a big machine, Melissa. Melissa, especially starting out, when you're having some problems or you're just a little frustrated, Please write on the Yahoo. Diana Wright is like right there. I mean that that gal. She's she is in in charge. So she will give you an answer pretty fast. I love how you name your baby. That's cute. Mine's my long arm setup. Its name varies. You know what I mean? Depends on what kind of day I'm having with it. It's either good or it's not so good. <laughs> oh, Melissa, you got a great mentor there. That gal is something else. So that's right, because Bonnie named her machine. Bonnie, are you enjoying your machine, sweetie? I hope you are. So let's see. So Melissa's been to a couple training. Patricia Fry, any good? Did you find any houses you love? And... I, to some of you who might not know, now I don't know, I hate to put Susan to work because I'm so tickled to see she's here, but if Susan feels like writing the email address to send, if you want to join our Yahoo group, send your email to this email address because that's how we kind of carry this a step farther. You can come there to get advice, a soft shoulder, um, tips, uh, free patterns. You know, we love free patterns, any any hints of sales or shows, but, um, and you can have your own picture folder. You can put pictures of your home, your quilts, your grandkids, whatever you want. It's your own picture folder and uh, fill it up. So, because let me tell you, when we look at your quilts, we get inspired, we get excited. I looked at Diana Wright's star the other day. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I want to build a quilt like her. I think I just, for me, for her, it might, she can do it, but I'm going to have to work twice as hard. I just know it. One thing she taught me was slow down. I watched one of her copacetic quilter videos, and she said, sometimes you have to go slow. And I thought, Really? <laughs> you know me, zip, zip, uh-oh, and wonder why it doesn't look right. You want to name it Jason Momoa so I can spend hours with Jason. Uh, Jason, it, he, what is his last name? I just forgot now. But Thumbs up, ladies. Please. Oh, thank you, Miss Vicky. Thank you, sweetie. Did get some material and, oh, good. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. Yeah, I love the pictures. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. So our Nadine, our, our sweetheart from Germany, took a picture of a barge going by on the River Elba. And I hope I'm saying that right, Elba. Um, and it had on it a Rocky Mountaineer train car and the kind of train cars where the glass goes up and over so that you can see when you're riding in the train you can see all the mountains and everything so i looked it up and sure enough canada canada has um that train that's a canadian train you ride all through the canadian rockies i put it on my bucket list 
Oh boy, that looks so much fun. Now let's see. 25 watching already. Good job. Good job. And didn't Bonnie do a wonderful job with her friend in that t-shirt quilt? That girl's reaction, the daughter's reaction was priceless. Priceless. So, you found, oh, a condo. Patricia found a condo in Roanoke on top of a hill. Oh, that sounds, can you imagine waking up every morning? Oh, my gosh. Could you put your sewing machine right in front of a window? Oh, my goodness. So, I love that. Mm. Now, you know what? I'm realizing I'm missing something. Lisa, oh, Game of Thrones. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. I'm old. I, I'm not with it and hip like you are. I just learned the other day if something's good, you say, hey, that's lit. Lit? Really? <laughs> I'm still saying cool. Back from the 1970s. <laughs> oh. So Mark's getting ready for a ride. Yay, yay. He's got a trip coming up soon to the coast. He goes to the coast for about five days by himself. It's so good for him. Mark is very responsible and always does his best. Sometimes he needs to just chill, relax. So it's wonderful. So last season starting next week. Okay. Oh, God, Kathleen, did it get too gory? Let me tell you my gory story. I went to see, this was way back when, when I liked this person, and before I knew too much about him, but I went to see Mel Gibson's Braveheart. Never was I so upset with a movie. I came out of that theater so upset. It was too gory and nobody warned me. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, so any of you new people, if you would like to join us on the Yahoo group, we would love to have you. So just send me an email and we will make sure that uh, we, I send you an invitation. So and Susan already put it up there and send me an email there and that's great. All right. So let's see. As usual, I typed up things I wanted to talk about. So I said, happy birthday to my Katie. Yay, Katie. Oh, boy. Sonia, have you gotten your kit yet? I know I sent you an email I was checking to see. Oh, Susan wrote it again. God, Susan, you're so good. I want Susan to win the lottery so she can just stay home and chat with me. I just love chatting with her. So, it's been so crazy there, Patty Chamberlain. The Wizard of Oz. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that Wizard of Oz. That scared the pajibers out of me. But you did get your pattern. Okay. I mean, your kit. You got your kit. So, Sonia and I, if anyone else is doing it, let us know. But Sonia and I, I think we might have to find a place to meet and work on a step together or something. Because I love doing stuff with others. We're doing the Jenny Byer Stellaris quilt. Do you see this? And all of those blocks are different in the center. So, now I don't know about Miss Sonia, but I'm doing mine by hand. In honor of Jenny, and because I'm just such a show-off, I'm going to sew it by hand. And the nice thing is, is it, it, it gives me something to do in the evening when I'm sitting and relaxing. And the reason I'm, I'm saying I'm a show off um, or maybe a suck up is because Jenny Beyer does all of her piecing, all of her quilting by hand. And I always feel like when I'm working, I'm working in that, I get into that moment. So, <laughs> so anyway, but we got our first month's instructions yesterday now Sonia have you looked at did you check her video and check her instructions I'm crazy <laughs> what 
Oh, Susan, I love you. And you, so I want Susan to have a good time, too, because that girl's been working so hard. She needs to relax and enjoy herself. So that is Diane 57 might not be here today. <laughs> You're scared of me. <laughs> Don't be scared of me. I'm as harmless as I come. <laughs> so. Not a problem. You know what? And you can sign up to her newsletter, which is free. And then if you do that every month when she gives you the next um, instructions, print them off, save them to your computer, and then later on if you want to do it. But the nice thing is, oh, good, you got the email. Okay, let me see. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Patty Chamberlain, I'm sorry you're having trouble with your computer. Take care, heart, good heart, and we will see you soon because I, I love my Miss Patty. She was one of our early girls, and I get very fond of the people who jumped right in and gave me a chance early on when I didn't know what I was doing. Not that I know that much what I'm doing now. So, and everyone see the beautiful quilt that was made by our Nadine. I, I'm just, I'm so tickled. I figured that's going to be behind me all the time. I do have another little quilt to show you behind it. So the only thing you know how to do by hand is English, English paper piecing and binding. I've never done English paper paste. Let me try to say that three times fast. English paper piecing. So, all right. Now, in um, I put... If anybody wants to sign up for Jenny Byers' newsletter to get the free patterns, I put it in last week's under the live stream, the information thing. So, because I remembered hearing that Sonia mentioned something about it. And I tell you what, Sonia, I don't know about you, hon, but I am so glad I bought the template set. That's a lot of templates. Oh, I know what I was going to ask Sonia. Hopefully she's still here. Um, so, yeah, she's, yeah. Um, oh, couldn't find the numbers for your fabrics, the plum one. I tell you what, afterwards, I'll see what I can figure out. Send, or send me an email, or remind me, Sonia, and I'll help you out with that. So, um, let me see. Now, the question we had with the late, with the first instruction from Jenny Byer is we're doing these little two-color diamonds that are going to go. I'll just show you this part right there because you really have to be a member of the newsletter, which is free, and then you can get all this. So I don't want to violate what she does. But two-color diamonds, and there are six of them in each. Um, does she call them a star or a medallion? But there's six of them, and then there's seven of the stars so that's 42 pieces you need and she said if you do the easy way to make a two color diamond would be to stow two long strips together different the different colors into a long strip and then take and cut out the diamond by you know making sure that the center of the diamond is on that seam and but she said it uses twice the fabric so in a few minutes, later on towards the end of it, I'll look at my fabrics in my Jenny Byer kit and see how pretty they are. If they're exceptional, I'm not wasting fabric, just like last year. Yeah, I think if I were to do English paper piecing, I would use, I wonder, a whip stitch. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I make it easy on myself. So y'all know that. I, I'm not going to be too pretty. But anyway, so I'm going to look at my fabric and then decide. But while we're here, I will show you my, my left arm is cramping. Maybe I better eat some more yogurt. I haven't had anything to eat today. And, um, but anyway, okay. I have been working. I have utmost respect for Diana Wright because I've been working daily on and one night till midnight on my grandson's quilt. 
Oh my God, I'm so sore. You know, the whole, and I'm so close. I'm 10 inches from being done, 10 inches. I was so hoping I could bring it down here and show you, but I'll show you. Well, next Sunday, it's leaving. I'll take pictures and put on the site. My daughter's going to take it with her. She's going up to see my daughter who's here, Becky. She's going to go see the grandson, my grandson, her nephew. <laughs> so anyway, but I wanted to tell you a couple things while I'm telling you this. Diana Wright, you're welcome to join in. And... Oh, poor Kathleen, so sick. I'm sorry. I hate colds. They just make you miserable. And, um, but anyway, I um, am working on my grandson's quilt. Now, this has been the worst quilt I've ever made. It has more love in it, but, oh, gosh, I chose a pattern that was insanely busy. It I only had two pages of the former magazine article. I didn't realize how big it was going to get. So it started to become a queen size quilt. What kind of baby quilt is queen size? So I took it all apart. Y'all know the story. Blah, 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 blah. Well, <laughs> when I put it back together, when you rip this part and that part, and you're trying to make these parts that formerly didn't touch work, I, what I put on that frame was a wibbly wobbly mess. Let me tell you, I had borders that were waving. I mean, not like the queen, a gentle wave, like this. <laughs> and I had areas that were puffy. And, you know, they say, ease, ease it in, quilt it in. There's some quilt song this lady wrote that, you know, oh, you can quilt it in. Oh, my gosh. So, you know what I did? I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to show you how I kind of quilted it in. And then I'm going to show you what I did with some of these wavy borders. Because I want this this quilt is now, you know, a month late batting because I'm going to wash it. And then when I shrink it, you maybe you won't notice that it's a little eased in. <laughs> it had a little bit too much fabric in certain places. But I'm going to tell you what I did. And, and Diana Wright's going to faint, faint over, fall over fainting. But where the border, a couple places where the border was just too full, which made it wavy, I took and just pleated it and ran a fine thing of with, with my long arm, because I wasn't going to take it off the frame. Just did a fine pleat and sewed tiny stitch right along the edge. Nobody will ever notice. Oh, Diana Wright would, but she's not going to see it up close. <laughs> but anyway, I had to learn. I had to learn. Yeah, the queen, the queen wave. But I had to, I said, you know what? I'm going to make a video of this because it's part of real life. It's part of what you deal with. And, you know, if I, if I hadn't have spent so much money for it, if I hadn't have, you know, it took me five months to do, I would have started again. But I will give you, Miss Busy Pat, don't pick the hardest pattern you come up with. I looked for a month to see what I wanted to do and pick something that was way out of my league. And so it's going to get done as it is. And I've got a, his tummy quilt um, already in progress too. So I'm going to try to get both those done by next week. But I, my arms and shoulders are so sore from doing hours and hours and hours of quilting. Remember this, Melissa. Take breaks. Do not do what I do and just be in front of that quilt frame for hours. It, it, you can't have to build up to that. Mm. Oh, there's really cute sailboat quilts out there. There you go, Susan. I tell you. I thought it had to be perfect for my grandson. And now it's going to be so far from perfect, it's not even funny. But you know what? I'm going to tell him there's so much love went into that and pers perseverance too. Mm. Melissa, that's wonderful. I don't do any stretches. I get so focused. When the tension's going good and I'm in the zone, that's the thing. You get the zone 
do where it's so easy and it's just flowing. Your muscle memory is perfect. You hate to stop. But then by the time you do stop, you're like a zombie. <laughs> Good idea. Now, see, I am lucky. With mine, I can sit down and I roll my chair back and forth. But get up from that because otherwise your feet will be swelling and your back will be killing you. So, hmm. Nadine's got to go. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. I talk too much. I talk too much. But watch the rest of it because i got a cute quilt to show you. Oh, unicorns are big right now. Big, big, big. So you can find good uni unicorn fabric. Oh, that's cute. That is so cute. So what did Diana Wright say when I said, oh, ribbon candy. I didn't even think of that. That's what my borders look like was ribbon candy. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Neat. Okay, boy, great advice. All right, so... I've got a really cute quilt to show you. I'll get to that real soon. But, so I found this free pattern. And, of course, I'm going to share it with you. If any of you um, don't want to wait until after I put it on the bottom when this when we're done, if you go to sewmamasew.com, www. Wait for it. To, there we go. Sewmamasew.com. Dot com and it is the cutest thing and I saw this and just thought refreshing easy and quick because honestly holiday things like that I want quick and easy I've got so much else going on so you'll need some freezer paper you will need when you go to this site to download it she will have whoop she will have on the, it's what it is. It's a tutorial. So I took my word program and I copied everything and shrunk the pictures and then cut and paste onto my word program so I can have a copy. Otherwise, if you don't know how to do that, you'll just have to sit with that, with that site open and do it. But, um, it's a great one for scraps. Now, I I just did mine freehand. She tells you what links, and, and here's for the three eggs. I just did mine freehand. You know me. I sat down here today starting about 1 o'clock and tried to see how fast I could do it. So, here is one of my eggs. Oop, that bottom, don't worry. That will be covered. Um. Here is another one of my eggs. This one is probably my favorite. It just came out. It came out so cute. And I just grabbed handfuls of fabrics that I thought looked spring and eastery. Here's another one of my eggs. And, you know, it's perfect for scraps because you just need something, you know. Then... Like I said, when you go to look at her website, she'll have a link. You kind of have to read in between. She'll have a link where you can print out the egg template. Got to have that. The only thing that's a little bit tricky about this, everybody knows how to strip piece. So, but here's your egg template. Print out three of those, okay? Although I don't think I even used all three. I just thought I needed three. And so what I did, I took a piece of muslin, because you have to use a foundation, took a piece of muslin, drew the egg shape on it, and I drew the egg shape. I added almost a half an inch to the egg shape because I wanted to make sure. Now, when she did it, she did it on a rectangle and just did it all the way across the rectangle, but I don't want to waste that much fabric. So I drew the egg shape, and I'm sewing it. Now, what you do, this is what you do. You take your first fabric, okay, and you lay your fabric right side up. 
and you put it across the egg. And you see you totally hide all the lines down here. And you can, if you want, take and pin it just so it stays there. You don't sew it. Just lay it on there. Then you take your next fabric and you put right sides together. You put these edges even. See, I'm working my way up this way. So right sides together and you just stitch right across. Then after you stitch, you go over to the iron and you iron it up. Nice and good. And I use starch. And then, let's say you're going to go add another, another piece of fabric. So you put this up here at this line. Okay? And you decide. Some of them, like I said, I don't want this wide of a pink. So I took the new fabric and just put it halfway up. Okay? And after I sewed this one on a quarter of an inch down, then I trimmed it to a quarter of an inch. Take it over to the sewing, I mean to the ironing board, and press that up. So you see what I've got? And so that's how you do it. And your muslin or any, you know, cheap fabric, that's your, that is your background. So you get all three of your eggs. And just show you again, all three of your eggs done. Now, then you take... Decide what background do you want. I wanted green grass background. And I had a batik with bubble-like things on it that I had chosen for it. When I put the busy eggs on top of that, it was awful. So I went back over and looked and looked and looked and see what I found. I said, oh, that's so cute. So I used this and I cut two big pieces because I want plenty of room to work. Then I came over and put this egg on it and said, nope, it kind of blends away. See, not enough contrast. Yes, I will be putting the egg, this, this pattern, on soon as we're done, I will put it on. So if you see, this looked good and, ha and stands out beautifully with these and this one. It does fine. Now, that green's a little troublesome. But with this one, it just blended in too much. And I thought, nope, I worked too hard. So what I did is I went back over and found another green. And I just laid the egg on the greens. I auditioned them, laid the egg on the green, and went, oh, that's it. I love it, love it, love it. Susan, you're something else, girlfriend. Susan found it for you. So this, I said, this is the green. I love the way it pops. And I even made my binding already. I didn't used to do this. When I used to make quilts, I never thought about the binding. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to bind some of them because who knows where the fabrics are now. So always make your binding while you're making the quilt. So now I told you you needed a piece of freezer paper. Because what you're going to do is you're going to draw your template shape cut out from the piece of paper that you printed. You're going to draw your template shape and place it under here. Trace it out where you can see the pencil line. And then you're going to, so once you trace it, then you're going to take and... Put it on your fabric, okay? Iron it. Put the shiny side towards the back of the fabric. Iron it on. Then you're going to take and cut out the middle, leaving a turning allowance, which I left a healthy half an inch because I wanted it to be able to turn it and not have to try to catch little wibbly edges. So what I did is you make a bunch of tiny little cuts. See that? And then I took and put spray starch on that little, all those little cut pieces. And that way, when I pressed them over the freezer paper, they're nice and stiff and they, they just stuck beautifully. And this is what I got a little nervous about. I would rather try to tuck under a piece and sew it on top of the thing. This is kind of a, this is a reverse applique. 
But I thought then of trying to tame all these different edges going around a corner. And I thought, you'll never, you'll never, it's too thick. You'll never get a smooth egg and you'll be unhappy with it. So I said, the woman wrote these directions for a reason. This is the easiest way to do it. So after you have tucked it all in, then you make sure that your egg is going to fit. See, I, st I had to take some stitches out because I didn't pin it all first and it started to turn a little on me. So pin it in place really good. And then you come in here and using matching thread, you do a fine little seam right near the edge. And what I do is take one of my long pins and just keep tucking because, you know, <coughs> it's hard to get, pardon me, that's my asthma. It's hard to get fabric to go totally smoothly in the curves. So with this little pin, I'm able to kind of tuck it under then push it through and tuck it, you know, just to make sure I've got a nice smooth edge. So once you make these three blocks, then I'm going to do some trapunto. I'm going to take the egg shape, cut an extra piece of batting. Might use polyester because I like the definition. I'm going to cut an extra piece for the egg, put it on the back of the egg shape, the, pat the batting, and then when I piece it and then put regular batting across the entire piece, then I'll come in and when I quilt it, I'll probably quilt lines or waves or whatever. Um, but it'll make each egg have definition. And I will pick my backing later. But I just thought this was so cute with the green. I loved. This was my fabric of the project. So that is made. So do you kind of, do you kind of have an idea then? H have I... Take a puff of my inhaler. Good point. Um, do you kind of have an idea now of how you're going to be doing this? <coughs> Take care, Busy Pat. Thank you for popping in. And congratulations again about the new grandbaby. Show how to do the trapunto. I will. And basically... I don't have my 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 um I don't have my batting down here, but you cut it out in this shape. And what I do actually, this will be sewn in place first. So with with this sewn in place, um, I take because this is the muslin. I take a couple drops of glue, stick that batting in place, then lay it carefully on the other batting and the backing, and pin it. You know, because I'm going to be using, I'm not going to put it on the long arm. I'm just going to do it with my domestic. So you use safety pins, pin it really good, and then either follow the lines, which would be the easiest, or figure out what kind of, maybe each little line I could do, like Angela Walters. I love Angela Walters. I could do a different thing in each strip. Now, another thing to tell you is I didn't measure these strips. I didn't mark anything. I just sewed them on. If they're crooked, that's fine with me, too. I even thought if it had been easier, wouldn't it have been fun to do wavy lines? But I just wanted to get it done. This will be on my table. And um, with the baby quilt, I'm doing trapunto on that, too. But it's so easy when you just cut that shape, put a couple drops of glue, glue it on the back, then lay it, go ahead and layer it like you normally would and pen. And when you start doing that extra quilting, that area where that extra layer is will show. It's very exciting. So, trapunto is easy. And the gluing, it, gluing the little extra pieces on is the easiest way. You can, like, feed yarn in through a big needle, you know, like sew your lines and then feed it through from the back and, that, and give it some oomph. And um, what I'll do is do a busier quilting pattern. It's probably a little leafy kind of thing or bunnies or whatever. Do a busier quilting around each egg. Keep the egg more simple to let that puffiness really show. And speak up now, Miss Diana Wright. This is where your experience is really, really good. So, 
So now I showed you that. <clears throat> and, and as I told you, the beach landscape will, um, will be done tomorrow. And I'll post it again. I was real proud of myself last week. So, let's see. Let's see what I've got on the back of here. I might have shown some of you this quilt. But it is so cute. I love this. This is a sulky pattern. And we did this in my guild, oh gosh, years ago. Let me pull the... Let me pull this here. Okay. Let me bring the camera up a little closer and show you what I have done. With this, now it is, it's from the Sulky Company. The only pattern, it was a free pattern on the Sulky, and it's in my old computer. I don't know if I can ever find it again. And, but if you go to the Sulky site, the, I guess they're Dutch or German, and they. I last saw it when I typed it in. I don't know if it was called I Love Sewing or what, but you, if you look sulky, I Love Sewing quilt pattern, cutest thing in the world. Had all the instructions, which I loved a little bit. I put in some homemade, I did some crocheted lace here, here, little bits of trim, this is a little needle. It's a real needle book that I made for it. Put a little button out here because what I loved about it was having, I loved having all the cute little things. See, there you go. I've now closed that needle book. Some antique buttons. I love the vintage little things sewn on here. Some metal buttons. I did these thimbles to put in this one. Then I sewed a needle threader here, an old needle that Mark cut the end off of here so it wouldn't be so sharp. My granddaughter had given me this one time, so I just put it on because I love her. Some buttons. I, I put pink ribbon through this eyelet lace. Here's Trapunto effect. Here's extra padding under this. I did this by hand. Put a bunch of buttons. Mark took a metal cheap thimble, because I don't use them. He took it and cut it in half and drilled two holes so I could sew that on there. Here are some of that, what do they call it now? Retro kind of thing, vintage. Here are some more vintage buttons, some old vintage pins. Here for Canada, where Mark was born, I put a maple leaf. Just little things I found in my jewelry box in my sewing boxes. I had so much fun with this. Made the little dress up here and put the little button and the trims and the lace. I love this little machine. So, I, and here's some more of my hand crocheted lace that I did. But I had the best time and then had a great time quilting it. And since it was so tiny, just using the tiny. In fact, I made this. I This is as close to a label as I've ever gotten, but I'm going to label everything eventually. 2014, I made this. So, or finished at least. But, um, but anyway, I just thought I'd show you this. Even if I showed you it before, I think it's precious. This is upstairs in my frame room. And I dearly love this. It's like little bits of my life are in here. This was left over back when I made a baby outfit for one of my friends. So there's little memories of different things I've done. And I love it. So glad that I don't have to use hooks and eyes anymore. I hated hook sewing on hooks and eyes. But now they look really cute. And just kind of sewed eyelets on. Here was a piece of old lace I had. So, and this is Trapunto too. And then if you quilt behind it, you really get the definition. So I thought I'd show you that. So look under Sulky. And I guess it would be I Love Sewing. 
Sulky the Thread Company, but that was just an absolutely precious quilt. And it was fun to do, and it was crafty to do, and I loved it. Love, love doing it. So, and I used pink, which wasn't at the time my favorite, but I, in fact, I think this is a Jenny Byer here. So, oh, and you know, speaking of Jenny Byer, there's some Jenny Byer fabric right there. Because, you know me, I try to add little Jenny Byer everywhere. So, now, let me see. <clears throat> Don't forget to do your taxes. I haven't done mine yet. It takes me six to eight hours to do them. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm cleaned off my table. Got my TV there. I don't know. I'm going to have to have a stiff drink. Maybe orange juice. <laughs> Maybe apple juice to get me through it. <laughs> um, okay. So, now, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do the landscape tomorrow. Thank you for your wonderful response to that. Mark tried to get my, I wanted to show you a tablet. I put some pictures on it, but, oh, here, the Vancouver Coast. Re oops, remember I was telling you that I had, um, a picture screensaver of the Vancouver coast. How lucky is Kathleen that she went there? So, and here is my Jenny Byer. Now, Sonia, if you're still here, we'll look for that together. And what Jenny Byer said, she has these videos. So she does each step. She makes like a little TV show. And so here is the template. If you want, if you don't mind wasting fabric, you can use this template. If you want to save fabric, she says that she has somewhere in all of these that I cut out and punched my little holes. I'm so glad I did too. I was so, so excited waiting, but now it just makes it easier. Okay, here we go. Here they are. Nope, these are Pete. I need in. Somewhere, I think she said she had little in templates. Boy, I'm making a mess here. But anyway, somewhere in here are the in templates that I can do a half at a time. Just measure. All right. Let me get this out of my way, guys. But I'm awfully glad I don't have to. I'm, it was really good that I spent the... It was like seven extra dollars to have them pre-printed versus just buying the, the, not the amount of template plastic you would need. So, oh, and here's, I'm doing the teal. I think Sonia said she's doing the purples. So, here we go with that. So excited. So excited. So... Let me push this back now. I'm done showing you that cute little quilt. Isn't that, isn't that just precious? Quilts like that make me happy. So, here is the kit that I bought from Jenny Buyer. So, what I have to do now is find the fabrics that she said. Ah, here's the line fabric. This is one of the fabrics. Now... So that's one, fabric three. So, so what Sonia was doing, did you find the, oh yeah, you're doing the purple. You said one of your fabrics you couldn't find. And what I do with them is she numbers the fabrics, but you have to, she'll give you a sheet with the kit that, where is mine? She'll, or with the pattern or with the kit, she'll give you a sheet that lists out the numbers of the fabric. And what I do is I use, I use, um, pardon me, a masking tape. I use masking tape and I anymore like using a Sharpie, maybe not quite that big, but I write on it fabric three or fabric two 
then put it on the main fabric, okay? That way you never get confused. Also, on the fabric labeling sheet, I will take and cut a little swatch and glue right on the piece of paper that says fabric one, fabric two, fabric three. And that way, between the swatch and the fabric, <coughs> having the numbers, then you know you're good. And she did the little mini, mini border because we need tons of this. And I signed up again for her blog because it was really amazing, the information. Let me tell you about something. I don't know if you remember that book that I bought last week. From, I bought from Jenny's. It was American Cotton from Farm to Quilt. And I read the section in there about Jenny. It is amazing. Oh, bye, Bonnie. Mwah. Bye, sweetie. It is amazing because Diana, now people are leaving. Diana Wright is doing a special thing for our group. So I will put it on our Yahoo site. And that way you can participate too. I should have done it yesterday. I've been working on that baby quilt like a fiend. But anyway, I will do that, Diana. I'm not trying to let you down. I'm excited about what it is. So um, I was reading about Jenny Byer. I didn't realize she was like early on in the 70s. She won the Good Housekeeping Contest in 76. She packed up her quilts, fabrics that she liked, colors, everything. Went up to New York and went to meet the fan fabric manufacturers and wanted them to design the fabrics that she wanted to see. Do you know in the 70s, there was no such thing as quilting cotton. You, they had fabrics for clothing and fabrics for home decorating. That was it. And she thought that they needed some quilting cottons, 100% cotton, because I've told you some of my early quilts, I know there was polyester in those. I know it. And that's all we had. I mean, you know, you've Get, go out and get what you find. But this was before there were 14 million quilters in America and that we had, we spend annually $3.5 billion. And they were like, what? Cotton for quilters? What, what's quilting? And so she didn't really get anywhere with them. And then she won that contest and someone called and said, hey, would you consider designing fabric for this company? They went to her, this this woman went to her. I realized that Jenny was a huge pioneer back in the day. She was fighting for us quilters back when nobody knew we really existed. And so she truly, I think she was the very first female or quilt quilter turned fabric designer. And so she designed for this one company for a couple of years. And then they closed shop. Well, somebody from RJR, who she's still with now, 17 years later, contacted her and said, would you design a quilting fabric line for us? She said, no. Well, that sounded odd. But then when he, they said he pushed a little further, he questioned a little more. And she said, honestly, I don't want to put my name on the quality of fabric that you make. He said, well, what if we told you that we would improve the quality to your standards if you'll design for us? And it happened. And the rest is history. So I just thought that was fascinating. So I encourage you, if you like quilting books, or go to your library and look for that book. And I don't have it down here with me. I know the woman, Durye Wong. Now, what is her first name? But it is American Cotton from Farm to Quilts, and I highly recommend it. And um, I was glad I got mine from Jenny's because she autographed it as well as the author. And so, way, I mean, that is just fascinating. I, I love it. I told Mark I've always admired her, but now it's like, wow, <laughs> I have good taste in people. That's why I know y'all are special people. I know it. I'm good at seeing that. So 
anyway. So I've got to find, I didn't bring my paperwork to show you. This is an unusual, this is not a normal Jenny with these CD stripes. This is unusual. So, whoops. Come on, camera. Good. Okay. <laughs> it said, don't put that up in front of us. Oh, yeah, with the stripes and the swirls, my poor camera went. <laughs> so <coughs> I might have to close this down a little early, guys. My asthma is making it. A little tough to talk. But what kind of questions and, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Another thing. These are the borders that Jenny normally makes. Okay? And what she wanted is she wanted to make a pattern that had all of these little interior lines around it. Okay? But then she realized if she used her, this, I, I found this out reading her blog, that if she used her regular border print and tried to cut down the little line, the little decorations, that, because I'll show you, it's right, see that, the little, that little, the little pyramids. No, nope, it's actually the little diamonds. See that, the little diamonds right there? Well, if you were to cut that out, to put it around all of those stars, you would need 17 yards of fabric. So she said, I'm going to do a fabric line that, and I'm trying to think of what she called it, something like miniature or something. And, and that way, if you like making miniature quilts, it works for you too. Aruba, and I think is the name of this fabric line, but I think she, she called them miniatures or something. And this way, you can cut a whole bunch of these guys out of here. Isn't that neat? So years ago, I bought some of her miniature borders um, because I plan on making one day. That's on my bucket list to make miniature quilts. So. Please take care of yourself. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Yeah, I do have to be able to breathe. And I think I've done, covered up most things. Is there anything else you have questions about or anything about these cutie pie, the Easter eggs? I mean, how fun are these Easter eggs? So... Yeah, I've got my inhaler right here. I don't go, I, that's something I had to learn. I don't go anywhere without my inhaler. My inhaler, I mean, I don't go out and work in the yard without my inhaler. So, but you do need freezer paper. You know, you can get it off the roll or whatever. You trace out your outline. But, you know, I love, I love holidays. And I love, I'm a kid at heart. And I just thought that was so cute. And don't get worried. I know that you have to you you have to kind of lay the fabric, tucking it under, lay it on top, and then sew it. Let me see if it'll it'll take a moment to sharpen. But you'll see, yeah, right over here you can see where they sewed it down. So I just thought this was precious. Thank you so much to Ma so, Mama So, um, for sharing this with all of us. And, ah, so evidently this pattern might be from Pita or Peta Peace from She Quilts A Lot. And she's a pattern designer, quilter, loves to share her sewing tips and tutorials. You can all learn about Pita and see her photos of you know, so she's got like these little, if you go to this website, you'll see all of these little things. So I thought this was really cute. I mean, I remember these fabrics. It's it's fun seeing them again because I just, you go right. I, and I think you're right. I think I'm going to go. I'm feeling puny when I don't get enough oxygen. It's real hard to talk. <laughs> but I... I think I'm going to go take it easy. I'm sorry to leave you again too soon. Next week, I'm going to really push for a full-time live stream, and I'll have lots of good things to show you. 
In fact, I'll do some Trapunto next week, and maybe I'll show you how I'm going to quilt this. We can kind of do it together. So if you wish, go to the Sew Mama Sew site, study that tutorial, get your scrap fabrics going, and uh, then, oh, I, I, here's the other page. Let, let it, sorry, it'll sharpen up. But you see where the freezer paper, and you cut the fabric out in the middle. And then, see that? So, I think you'll like it. All right. Now, Miss Melissa, I'm curious if we're going to see you next Sunday. But I tell you, girlfriend, send me pictures, and I will show them. By that time, I'll have the tablet working, so I can show you that. But, uh, <laughs> so, Melissa, we want to see pictures of your frame. All right. So, uh, thank you, Linda. I, I appreciate it. With the, with the, the pollen's been awful, and I'm going to start cooking non-aromatic things for a bit. <laughs> So, y'all take good care. Anybody have any questions? We're good to see you again, Linda Martin. Good to see you. I just, I love it. I love the people I see in here. Y'all are so great. It's nice to see Diane57. I love it. Okay, good guys. Anybody with any questions, shoot me an email. I'm, I'm real good at answering emails, so... Feel free to shoot me an email. And uh, Sonia, it was so nice talking to her. I'm excited about us working on this. In fact, you know what we do? Sonia, if you have a way of taking pictures of your work, we'll show them my progress on the Jenny Buyer, and we'll show them your progress. And since she's doing it by machine and I'm doing it by hand, that would be fun to show you the difference. So I know she's going to get hers done faster than mine. I can guarantee that. So that'll be fun. We've got a lot to look forward to. And don't forget, as soon as I finish the beach, um, <clears throat> as soon as I finish this beach landscape, I'm going to start a mountain landscape. So hang in there, guys. Uh, thank you, sweetheart. Yep, I don't go anywhere without my handy inhaler. So y'all take care. Yeah, that's the problem. By the time your lungs get all swollen up, it takes a couple weeks, you know. But I'll be good. All right. Well, that will be fun, Sonia. So when you, if you work on it, and it, whenever you start working on your little diamonds, send me pictures. That would be fun. Take good care, everyone. Do something really good for yourself. People, especially people like Susan, who are so incredibly busy. And make sure to feed your soul. Susan says she was going to spend time in her sewing room. I think it's the best medicine you can get. So... Y'all take good care of yourselves, okay? And I'll see you next week and feed your soul. Bye-bye, guys. Mwah. See you later, guys. Uh, big hugs to everybody. Y'all are the best. Y'all are the best. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>